Hello, welcome to LabVIEW Advantage and in this video we'll discuss about the final part of the Agile Software Development Introduction and Principles final part. So, uh, basically good code is about object-oriented programming. Let's, the most important part is the managing the dependencies by selectively reinverting uh, certain key dependencies. So basically in this uh, particular presentation, we'll discuss only about five of them. So let's start uh, with the first principle. The first principle is the single responsibility principle. So it states that your module, your class, your code uh, should do only one task at a time. Uh, this also allows low coupling. So it depends less on other modules. So basically this means it's very easier to change. Uh, let's see the symptom and then the solution for the SRV. So the code into the left hand side is the uh, complete violation of the SRV. The main reason is because the data log class is basically has got the data uh, called data log. The same data has been used by different uh, functions. If I have to make change to one of the VIs or one of the data inside the data log or something like that, whole structure will change. To avoid that, rather than doing so, what we do is we are going to make the parent class a data log and then make separate child classes. All their data are now separate and any change in the child class is not going to affect the... Uh, now, the next principle is the dependency inversion principle. So it's about like inverting the dependencies so that they do not no longer depend upon the high level modules or the low level utility layer uses the data of uh, mechanism layer and mechanism layer uh, depends upon policy layer. If I have to make change to any one of that or add functionality in one of that, the whole structure may change. To avoid this, what we do is we rather add an interface uh, between uh, two layers. For example, in this case, we have got two interfaces. One is policy service interface and another one is mechanism service interface. They all depend upon the abstraction. So if we, rather than having the concrete uh, dependencies, we add the data abstraction, uh, creating the override VIs. Uh, parent the parent class is like it does not depend upon the child classes and child classes does not depend upon the uh, parent class rather the child classes will depend on the override vi basically in this case if we look into the left hand side we have perfectly working code okay? basically in the beginning you created an application that uh, uses to read only the pdf in the future your application required to handle the movie uh, file as well so basically in this case, if I want to add the functionality, if I want to extend the application's concrete dependency over there. So if I have to add the movie reader, I have to go back and then make changes over there. So this is not at all extensive. It's not scalable. We create the override VI called ReadyVook. So in this case, what actually is happening is we are able to now add as many types of uh, different formats to be worked on. Uh, now the third principle is the list club uh, substitution principle. The child class should be able to able to use without knowing that like it is inherited. So in this case basically this is the violation of LSP because like uh, uh, we have considered that our square is the child of rectangle. So basically rectangle has uh, two different dimensions when the rectangle class is being loaded in the first iteration it works perfectly well but uh, when we run in the second iteration uh, we get the square object so in this case what actually happens is uh, square inheriting from the rectangle both rectangle and the square will, will inherit the properties from the quadrilateral class so it's when the square LV class will run it will basically use only the war right length. And now open close principle. This is another very important. This classes module function should be open for extension but closed for modification. So first of all, uh, using the SRP we solve that problem. So after so after we have uh, used the SRP principle, now we are able to add as many extensions as possible without changing the original code or the parent class. So there are like some prerequisites for uh, open closed principle to determine. First of all, 
uh, there are some limitations for example we need to know what can be the changes in the future we need to know what will be the added future features and changes okay uh, finally we came into the interface segregation principle your vis your methods uh, your classes should not depend on other classes that you are not going to basically we discuss in terms of the fat interfaces fat interfaces is basically just like i said it's the lack of cohesion and high coupling so uh, to avoid this we use the user stories stories to define the interface and make the code extensible so we can add as many uh, like a functional so for notes for the OSP, this is very important um, LabVIEW does not have interfaces like other programming languages uh, LabVIEW also does not uh, support multiple inheritance uh, LabVIEW uses a dynamic dispatcher overriding method at runtime for polymorphism uh, dynamic dispatch helps uh, objects use only the method they require uh, that is the example of the fat interface into the left hand side uh, if you see in the middle one we have got the some application called timer uh, which has got like a timer uh, class and door class and time door class for example now we want to implement both of the functionalities for example we want to inherit from both uh, timer timeout and as well as the door we're trying to uh, inherit uh, both of the like uh, method vi's into the time door class but the main thing is like since the lab view does not support the multiple intents we want to be able to use basically what we do is uh, we add another via method vi uh, which is the timeout.vi but the main thing is like uh, it might contain the same code but basically it's not the same so like they are not related and uh, it is not the inherited code. This way we can avoid a violation of ISP. Now, uh, to summarize, uh, implementation of the solid principles and object-oriented programming provides, provides high cohesiveness and low coupling in our code. So now uh, let's uh, go back to our analysis. Okay? So the left-hand side, we see like a violation of everything. So basically, if we use the SRP, ISP, and DIP, we are able to like uh, separate all different kind of different kind of cables together bundle them together and manage them so that it will be much more easier for us to uh, add more functionality or operation and everything so on so uh, in the second uh, row uh, if we see uh, we can we would be able to uh, use the OCP and the LSP to uh, scalable scale our application uh, similarly in the final diagram for example uh, this is this is the problem when we only discuss in terms of the requirements of the user for example the user contractor got the contract to build one of the roads but main thing is like a, uh, the contractor did not use the user stories basically the users are not the government but the the users are the public so when the rain came the road was completely ruined so basically if we if the contractor had to use the user stories basically uh, that can be solved by using the SRP and ISP by adding the drainage system over there as we can see on to the right hand picture so for the further read uh, you can read the agile software development principle patterns and practices this is a very popular book by Robert C. Martin uh, thank you for watching this video uh, I hope you have learned a little bit about the software engineering as well uh, please uh, like, comment, and share this video, and please subscribe to this channel for further LabVIEW videos. Thank you very much.